旅に出るぞ Hey guys, what's going on? Garenex here, bringing you another video on Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross. So Netmarble just dropped the trailer for Goddess List. They didn't mention exactly when she will come, but it's most likely next week. And if you don't have the gems to summon for her, then you will most likely struggle a lot in PvP. And I mean, a lot. So why is she so broken? Let's take a look at her skills. Her first skill inflicts damage equals to 200% of attack on one enemy on rank 1. On rank 2, cancels stances on one enemy and inflicts damage equals to 200% of attack, then stuns for 1 turn. And on rank 3, cancels stances on one enemy and inflicts damage equals to 250% of attack, then stuns for 2 turns. Her second skill creates a barrier around all allies equals to 150% of attack for 1 turn. When attacked, no bonus damage effect will be applied, exclude rupture. That is on rank 1. On rank 2 is 200% of attack for 1 turn, and on rank 3 is 300% of attack for 2 turns. So that means your pierce will not have extra damage, your weak point will not have extra damage, your amplifier will not have extra damage, only rupture will have the extra damage, and there's just not many good rupture units around. And her ult heals HP of all allies equals to 30% of max HP, reflects 40% of damage taken, and heals for 50% of the damage reflected for 2 turns. That is on 1 6. When you get her up to 6 6, the healing multiplier goes up to 70%, and the reflect multiplier goes up to 120%. A passive, if an ally is going to die, recover HP by the amount before death and revive the hero. Once per battle, applies when entering the battle. So that's why she's so broken. She has a stun, she has a barrier that blocks out all the damage multiplier except for rupture, she can heal and reflect damage, and she can revive a dead ally. She basically has everything you need to keep your team alive for as long as possible. She's just really overpowered in PvP. Even if you don't use her in PvP, she's still amazing in endgame content. For example, she's really good to auto in Hell Red Demon. We all know Hell Demons are annoying as hell because they take so damn long. So if you have Goddess List, you can safely auto Hell Red Demon without much issue. She'll also be amazing for the Tower of Challenge, which will be coming in the future as well. So for her gear, you can go with HP Defense set so she can stay alive for as long as possible. Or you can go with attack defense if you want to strengthen her barrier since it scales with attack. Personally, I will go with HP defense because you still need to rely on RNG to get the barrier card. If you didn't get a card, then there's no point in using an attack defense set. So, should you summon or skip Goddess Liz? I would say yes if you have enough gems for her because she is just so broken. Especially if you play PvP, it is going to be tough if you don't have Goddess Liz. For those of you that don't have enough gems, this is debatable. Going by the pace of global, they might release a goddess list counter really soon. Not to mention there's also the next festival unit which is Wing King, which is also another unit that is very much broken. Goddess list should be in that banner as well, so it may be better to skip this banner and wait for that banner instead so you can get all of them at once. However, I feel that this argument only applies when you don't really play PvP. If you love PvP, then it's just really difficult without Goddess List. I hope this video gives you some insights on Goddess Elizabeth and whether you should summon or skip, so you can make a smart decision. Join my Discord if you wish to discuss more about Goddess List or the game in general, link will be in the description below. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. That's it for today, take care and have a great day ahead.